Hello beautiful people, my name is Wendy and today I'm bringing you the Myers-Briggs book tag. I was tagged to do the Myers-Briggs book tag by my lovely friend Rhiannon from Crescent Moon Reads whose video I'll have linked in the description box below. If you're not familiar, Myers-Briggs refers to the Myers-Briggs personality test, also sometimes known as MBTI, and I'll have what that stands for written out down here because I'm not quite sure what the acronym means. Basically, long story short, you fill out a questionnaire and you get a four letter result. And the point of those four letters is to basically give you a sort of baseline indicator of how you perceive the world and how you make your decisions. For each of the four letters in your official MBTI personality type, there are two options, meaning there's a grand total of 16 different personality types. And the creator of this tag, the lovely Jaded Reader, who I'll also have linked in the description box below, was clever and cool enough to come up with a different question for each of them. So to keep this video from getting far, far, far too long, without further ado, I'm just gonna go through the prompts and let you know what my Myers-Briggs book tag looks like. Prompt number one is to know your MBTI type. I already know mine, I am an INFP. The four letters stand for introvert, intuition, feeling, and perceiving. So the prompt for I, introversion. You can be outgoing, but you need to recharge with some calming solitude. What is your favorite place to read and unwind? Now I am an equal opportunity reader. If I see a place where I can open my book and shut out the rest of the world, that's what I'm gonna do. But I think my favorite place to do so since coming to Boston is in the Boston Public Garden. It's just really calming for me to be able to go out into nature and read my book and hopefully know that there's enough dogs around that squirrels won't attack me while I'm doing so, which is apparently a risk that I run when I read outside. In seriousness though, I really enjoy it because I really love reading and nature, so why not combine the two? Also, it's pretty convenient because the college I go to, Emerson, is literally right next to the common, which is right next to the public garden, so it's like a two minute walk pretty much every single day. The prompt for N or intuition. Some books are meant to be understood and others are meant to be explored. What book or character stands for an idea that is deeply meaningful to you? For this prompt, I have chosen Star Carter and honestly the whole book, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. If you live in the United States or you follow US current affairs, which I'm sure most of you guys do, then you know that historically, all up until our contemporary age, America has not been too kind to its black population. And unfortunately, a lot of times in our educational system, we try to cover that up. I am just now, for example, in college, learning about the Great Migration, which if you don't know what that is, definitely read Richard Wright's 12 Million Black Voices. It's phenomenal. But I digress. The point is, Despite all the hardships, all the absolute crap that has been systematically thrown at people like Star, she still stands up and she fights for what she believes in and she fights for equality and justice. And that, to me, at this stage in my life, was so, so, so important to read. Star Carter represents hope and resilience. And I think that is an invaluable lesson to learn no matter how old you are. And I think the hate you give is a perfect example of it. The prompt for F or feeling, not everything needs to be realistic. What's the fun in a world with limits? Which fantasy world do you find so atmospheric you slip inside and you never wanna leave? If you've been here for like more than two videos, you might think you know what I'm gonna be holding up. And honestly, because I'm a fantasy lover, I guess like, actually there's a lot of things that you could think I'm gonna be putting up, but what I'm really gonna be putting up is The World of the Witchlands by Susan Denner. This is the series that involves Truth Witch, Wind Witch, and this latest novella, Sight Witch. I... Love, love, love high fantasy. I also love YA, and unfortunately for me, every time I'm promised a high fantasy that is also YA, I'm severely let down, but not this one. Susan Dennard writes high fantasy so heckin' well. The world of the Witchlands is the literature equivalent, or the closest one that I can find to the world of Avatar The Last Airbender, which might be one of my favorite TV shows of all time. I just love the vast array of different types of magic. I love that the universe has rules that don't ever seem to get broken, even when it would be super, super convenient for both the story and the characters. I, oh God, it's so wonderful. And, and, hold up. Does this one have a map? It does, it does. See, okay, the map is based kind of off Europe and a lot of it takes place, like the plot of the story takes place in this little region, which is Croatia, that, or where Croatia would be if this were Europe. And Susan Dennett herself has said the world of the Witchlands, at least some parts of it, are based off of Croatia, which that's where I'm from and is one of my favorite places in the whole wide world. So 
yeah, it's got my favorite things, High Fantasy, Elemental Magic, and Croatian Ties. And obviously, I mean, I just love Susan Dennard as a human being. She is delightful and wonderful, and all of you should read all of her books and support her. Okay, I'm done. The Witchlands world. That is my answer. <laughs> and finally, the prompt for P or perceiving. TBRs are fun to construct and meant to be destroyed. I agree with this. I've recently stopped doing TBRs. Do you stick to the list or do you mix it up every now and then? What's a book you've put down that you want to pick back up but just haven't been in the mood for? So as I said, I have stopped making TBR videos because I've stopped constructing TBRs. I realized a little while back that I fell in love with reading not by making lists and then checking all of the books I've put on the list off, which is sort of what I default to when I'd make a TBR, even if I wasn't feeling a certain book. If I make a list, I'm gonna stick to it, but sometimes I'm not gonna be happy that I've made the list. And one book that I almost put on a TBR, but I haven't yet because it's just, it's not my time to read it yet, is Two Dark Reigns by Kendara Blake. This is the third, third? The third official book in the Three Dark Crown series. I know there's like a novella bind up, so I'm not quite sure, like third and a half book? Mm. I don't know. This book series, I think, was originally meant to be a duology and then Kendara Blake split it up into four books and I absolutely love them. I think the first one is super atmospheric and builds up the characters really well. The second one increases the speed of the plot and things start happening and it becomes far more dynamic and I know, I know that this is gonna continue on that cool trajectory but I'm just, I'm not ready. I need to read the novellas first. I want to reread books one and two first. I want to but it's not time. So part three of the Myers-Briggs book tag is to answer the question that is based off of your specific type. So mine is again INFP. INFP, the idealist. Even when conflict runs high, you can be the advocate for either side. What is a book that was not well received but you were able to find its good qualities. Okay, I really love this prompt. I mean, you've seen my wrap-ups, you know that I try to find a good and a bad in everything, whether I enjoy it or not. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit with this prompt, and I'm not gonna choose a specific book. I'm rather going to choose an age range, one that all of these books are a part of. Yes, I'm gonna be talking about YA for a hot second. Now I know that since we're on booktube, and booktube is predominantly focused on, if you will, young adult literature, that might not seem like an unpopular opinion, but in the greater scheme of the world, and especially for me because I am in so many literature classes, so many guys, YA still gets a very bad rap. Now whether I'm reading these books or books like them on the train, just minding my own business and trying to get to school without anyone bothering me, or if I'm in the public garden just having a good time, or if I'm a not quite teenage girl talking about books that are written for teenagers on the internet, always, 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 there's gonna be somebody coming up and giving me some kind of crap about that. So here's my little spiel, I guess, in defense of YA. Sometimes, yes, it isn't that deep. Sometimes it's just a fun story that you can escape to and good defeats evil without very many problems and there are hardly any consequences for the main characters that you've grown to love. But what's wrong with that? What's wrong with enjoying a little bit of escapism now and again? What's wrong with being empathetic and caring for young people who are slowly beginning to discover themselves? I think that teenagers on a whole get a really bad rep. So if adults are reading young adult, if they're relating to and empathizing with young people, I think that that can only be valuable because the moment you marginalize someone Somebody who's in that middle ground between childhood and adulthood, the moment you put them in a box of like, oh, you're too stupid to know any better, but we're gonna give you like all these responsibilities and things, you begin the process of turning them into a jaded, sad individual. So I think that if we understand where teenagers are coming from and we understand their plights and struggles, many of which are present in young adult literature, if we start listening to that group of people, I think that we'll all be better off for it. And sometimes, sometimes the things that young adult books are written about are things that adults feel they can't talk about. Angie Thomas's The Hate You Give has been a New York Times bestseller for a good bit over a year now. And the reason for it is her story resonates with so many people all over the world, really. The way that young people experience loss and the way that young people who are discovering their position in the world react to realizing that for a lot of society, they are basically second-class citizens is, is, is heartbreaking and it's heart-wrenching and it's such an important story to tell. And very often it is shoved under the bus as something like, oh, it doesn't need to be talked about because we'd rather, you know, listen to another internal monologue of God knows what, an unhappy wife in her home or something or, a man with all of his man pain. I'm just, ugh. I'm not saying adult lit is bad. I am saying that YA is a lot more than a lot of people give it credit for. And I'm 
sick as a reader and a fan of it of people trying to make me feel bad for either having fun or looking for people like myself in literature or three caring about things that I think we should all be caring about. Empathy is missing from the world on a fundamental level in so many ways and I think that if we all have a little bit more of it then we'll all be a little bit better off. Wow, okay, um, <laughs> that got a little bit away from me. <laughs> I'll have to script and actually do an in defense of YA video because there's so many more things that I would like to say about it. There's too many for the confines of the Myers-Briggs book tag, which is officially, as of now, complete. I would like to tag my lovely, lovely friends Lou from Books Are A Way Of Life, May from May Reads, and Hannah from Snow White and the Seven Shelves to do this tag, as well as you. If you're watching this video and you think it's interesting, I had a lot of fun making it, so I hope that you do too if you decide to do it. And if you do, let me know in the comment box so that I can go watch it and see. If you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up, and if you liked me, maybe consider subscribing to this channel. There'll be more bookish content every single Saturday. But until then, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.